So what happens when two students from Ohio State uh, try to take the sound that they heard in the MC5 and the Stooges and turn it into um, avant-garde free jazz exploration? Well, that's what a couple of students decided to do after coming to Detroit on uh, a little vacation and uh, seeing uh, MC5 on the night that they recorded uh, Kick Out the Jams at the Grandy Ballroom. By the way, the Grandy Ballroom still exists in Detroit. Um, it's uh, deteriorating and um, there are some attempts being made to kind of save it. Um, a friend of mine and uh, a friend and I went to, uh, we were music fans when I was going to school in Detroit, uh, went to college in Detroit and uh, we uh, actually were able to slip into the back door of the uh, of the uh, Grandy Ballroom. This is back in the uh, in the 90s, and it was in the winter time. And I'll never forget uh, walking back there. Keep in mind the Grandy Ball Ballroom is a place that uh, Led Zeppelin and the Who and Cream and you know anyone who was anyone who came through this area back then played the Grandy Ballroom, and it was a cool theater, and uh, a lot of tales and a lot of great stories about what went on inside the Grandy Ballroom. Well, this friend of our, and mine and, and me went to, the, uh, went to the Grandy, we pushed the back door open and walked into what was the remnants of, of the Grandy Ballroom, and uh, the whole roof of the theater had fallen in, and uh, snow I remember snow was coming in. A friend of mine, he was clicking pictures. He had a, an instant camera. This is back in the days of an instant camera. I don't know what happened on any of those photos, but I'd love to see them. But he, um, he was clicking pictures, and we walked around as best we could. Um, there's a, a basement level, and we were very afraid of going right through the, right through the floorboards. And so we were not there for a real long time but just enough to get a feel for um, what was left of a place that we, we thought should have been uh, preserved. Today, the Grandy Ballroom is still there and, and there are some community attempts being made to try to rescue what's left of it, and, uh, which is a, a great thing that should have been done you know, 30 years ago. Uh, anyway, uh, students from Ohio, um, Ohio uh, uh, came to uh, Michigan and they um, went to go see the Stooges, and uh, the Stooges were referred to back then as the, the little brother band of the MC5. So wherever the MC5 played, the Stooges opened. And, uh, and they loved the sound that they heard. And when they left and they went back to school, um, they kind of had this idea in, in their minds about you know, mixing kind of avant-garde sounds with this, um, kind of the, the trappings or the instrumentation of rock and roll, of, of what they heard from the MC5. Uh, if you'll take a look at the uh, Kick Out the Jams, flip it over, flip the album over onto the second side, they actually do a Sun Rock cover, which shows you that even the MC5 was thinking about that direction. Now that's not something they explored but imagine what the sound would have been like if the MC5 had decided to, to take that exploration. And there's actually an album that, that m moves in that direction that is an amazing piece of music. Um, brutal, in the same way that the MC5 was. Rough, um, exploratory, sonic, um, um, wiping away all your, your preconceived notions about what can be done with the drums and the guitar. And that album is called The Daily Dance. The Daily Dance. And uh, I don't hear this being talked about too much from really from anyone. Now it could be that people have already done that. I'm sure they, I'm sure other people have. But this is a record that I, oh, Probably 10 or 15 years ago, I heard um, I heard this amazing sound coming out of a, a bedroom of some a house that I was at, and um, they had an original copy of this, uh, and they were blasting it. 
and um, much to the um, much to the chagrin of most of the people who was there, who were there, it was a little party going on, and most of the people just felt like this was just a just a bundle of noise. But the Daily Danes take that those hints that the MC5 uh, took on the second side to kick out the jams, and really turned it into a sonic exploration. And this is much, much closer to, musically, to free jazz um, and avant-garde jazz than it is to anything based in rock and roll. In fact, I would say your average rock and roll fan is not gonna be a, not gonna like this record. Um, there's the back cover. Let's give you some ideas of what that session could have looked like. Uh, two gentlemen that are on it is Doug, Doug Schneider, who does the electric guitar parts, and Bob Thomas, who does all the drums and percussion. And that's all you have as far as uh, instrumentation goes. But the music itself, when you look at that front cover, I should take it out of the When you hear the music itself, it's much, much closer to, to this as far as what those instruments do. This is not a you know, black and white recording. This is a recording full of, of exploration and color and beauty and violence and aggression and all of those emotions that are, are discussed, I think, in some of the finest you know, free jazz recordings. And these were two kids from Ohio, to, uh, uh, um, Ohio, who got the idea to make what is one of probably the greatest avant-garde recordings there is after seeing the Stooges and the MC5. And they said they heard a certain, in reading a little bit about it, they said that they heard a certain hollowness in the sound, um, that it was the sparseness of the instrumentations. You know, part of that, that purity when you listen to the MC5, or when, even when you listen to um, the Stones, or the Stones, the, the Stooges, was that, um, you know, there's, it's a, really a very, you know, rudimentary sound. There's a lot of air between the instruments. I mean, that's why we we focus on that great sound that the Stooges have on their guitar, that chunk, 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 chunk. There's not a lot of, um, you know, studio production. There aren't any synth beds uh, softening the sound. And that's what really, um, that it was that extreme of the sound that the guys in Daily Dance wanted to explore, but explore in a much, much different different way. You know, you're not gonna hear Stooges songs like No Fun or, or uh, Now I Wanna Be Your Dog um, brought on this. But I would say this is a, if you have some, some daring ears and you're in the mood to hear something that's going to take you on a trip um, somewhere. Um, if you're up for that, if you're up for that experience, um, you know, you're going to get something out of this recording that you're never going to get out of your average uh, garage rock band. And that's not to put down a garage rock because I dig the hell out of garage rock sound. But this is going in a little bit different of a direction. And if you do like that sound, if you like that MC5 sound, and you flip the second side of that album over and you've always been a fan of it and you thought where would this go next yeah that's what you're going to hear here um you, the reissue of this can be still had i think pretty i think it came out you know in, in 2009 or 2010 and i think you know new copies are probably still available um so it's not, this isn't something that a lot of people are, are, are gravitating towards. So you can still grab a, a nice copy of it. The sound is fantastic. And, um, you know, th this isn't gonna be something that you're gonna probably put on every day. But when you're in the mood for it, 
and you get a listen and you're you're going to be glued to the couch going you know what is this and in every bit the same way you would with uh you know um captain beefheart um in fact i would say this um for me personally this even goes a, a step further than where um where beefheart goes and i have all the respect for that and and those are great recordings and people who say that it's i've heard people refer to it as anti-music um it's not it's amazing music but you've got to have the patience and the willingness to let your ears go there and if you don't then you're not going to hear it and uh, that's fine um it's not for you it's meant for somebody else in fact um on metal machine music there's a um which is a lou reed lou reed famous lou reed album basically uh you know, droney, white noise recording. And Lou Reed says that, you know, this isn't for everyone. And if you don't hear it, then it's not meant for you. It's meant for somebody else. And the people who do hear it, he says something to the effect, the people who do know it and do hear it, they'll know that it was meant for them. And if it's not, I think he kind of comes out and even says, that's okay. Just move on and, and go on finding the stuff that you like. Um, it was made for, for the people who are going to be able to, um, it, and it doesn't mean those people are better. It doesn't mean that they're smarter. It just means that they're tuning their ears to something. And mostly I think it's a willingness to, to let the music uh, come on to you. It's not going to happen right away. You have to keep, have to keep listening and eventually it will open itself to you. And if it doesn't, Hey, that's okay. It's just music. So just records. Um, Daily Dance. Check it out. Uh, amazing recording. And one that, um, if you want to explore the avant-garde side of, uh, of things, uh, might be one worth, uh, worth checking out. Thanks. Have a good weekend.